Um, I also want to take the opportunity to thank the people of San Francisco. Um, this weekend, uh, things looked uh, like somewhat of a, a success in terms of social distancing for the most part. Definitely an improvement from last weekend. Uh, we, uh, the streets were, were pretty clear. Uh, there were some definite hotspot areas that we're going to be focusing on, uh, but the beaches and some of the parks and other places uh, where people were practicing social distancing, and uh, we very much appreciate your cooperation. It will uh, make a world of difference, and in fact, uh, we already have made a difference in, in really saving lives. We uh, may not realize the impacts of this until this is all over, but eventually uh, we will learn, I'm sure, uh, that because of what we have done and how we all have participated in complying with social distancing, it truly has saved lives. Uh, as of today, uh, we have 374 confirmed cases uh, with six deaths. Um, that is six people who have passed away uh, because of the coronavirus, and my heart goes out to the family members and the friends of, of those who we have lost here in San Francisco. Uh, one person uh, is, is too much of a loss, and uh, as we have said before, uh, this is a very deadly virus, as you are seeing, not just in San Francisco, but throughout the country. And the reason why we have taken significant steps has everything to do with saving lives and protecting public health, uh, because we know uh, that there will be challenges on our health care system. And we know that people are anxious to know uh, about the uh, stay-at-home order and whether or not that will be extended. Um, I know that our county health op officers will be uh, making an announcement tomorrow uh, to talk the, about the specifics of extending the uh, stay-at-home order until May 1st of this year, um, and more details are to come on that, but uh, for the sake of planning and so that everyone can begin to know that this uh, is going to continue to have an impact, uh, you should definitely plan uh, to uh, stay at home, and, and, and this process and what we're doing here uh, will continue until at least May 1st. If anything changes, we will definitely notify the public. So I want to just talk a little bit about uh, some of the challenges that we are having and will continue to have and what we're doing to prepare for those challenges. We've said from the very beginning, we knew that our vulnerable populations, not only consisting of our elderly, but also those who are living in congregate settings and sadly those who are living on our streets uh, would also be considered a part of that vulnerable population. And so we would have to move quickly uh, to make sure that in places uh, where we have single room occupancy hotels, where our shelter systems are, and places like Laguna Honda, which house a significant population of elderly patients, uh, we had a plan and we were going to keep people safe. Uh, from the very beginning, we knew this would be a challenge. And many of you have heard about some of the recent information of uh, staff members being tested um, and, and coming back positive in Laguna Honda. And since then, we've been taking a number of steps uh, in order to test others who might have been in contact with those individuals. And, and thus far, what we have learned is nine uh, employees of Laguna Honda Hospital have tested positive as well as two patients. Um, and we are still uh, testing people uh, at Laguna Honda Hospital and we'll have more information about the specifics uh, once those test results come in and Dr. Colfax will provide uh, some more details as well. We knew the situation would be challenging. And so immediately last week, um, I sent a letter to the Federal Department of Human Services asking for significant support so that we could not only focus on making sure we provide the resources and support to this hospital and, and we don't continue to drain other services, uh, but we have the expertise and the testing on site and the other things that are needed in order to uh, prevent 
uh, something from happening that we know has happened in other places uh, throughout the country, including in Washington, that house a significant population of uh, elderly patients. Lagunda Hada is one of the largest uh, hospitals of its kind uh, anywhere in the country, uh, housing over 750 very, very vulnerable residents who cannot take care of themselves. Uh, and this is basically their home, and this is where they eat, this is where they live, this is where they're cared for. And so we have been taking immediate steps in order to help uh, support uh, this hospital and support um, the people and the staff who are a part of it. Um, we uh, were fortunate in that the CDC, on Friday, after sending that urgent request uh, to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the CDC has sent us two infectious disease doctors and two epidemiologists and the California Department of Public Health has sent two infectious prevention nurses to help assess the situation at Laguna Honda and to make recommendations and we also have a dedicated staff member at the CDC in Atlanta to help monitor and facilitate the situation specifically at Laguna Honda uh, because we know uh, that, again, this is a very vulnerable population, uh, more testing needs to be done, and it's going to be important that we have the resources and we have the support necessary uh, to protect and save lives. Uh, this is just a start, and I am grateful for what we've received, but I want to be clear, it's not nearly enough to get us to a better place with specifically concentrating on Laguna Honda Hospital. Uh, so we are definitely going to be reaching out to our federal and state partners to ask for additional support uh, for the, the residents and the staff at Laguna Honda Hospital. Um, I also want to be clear that, uh, you know, the situation will escalate at Laguna Honda. It will escalate here in San Francisco. Uh, and the fact that we are taking uh, such drastic steps uh, to, in essence, pretty much shut down San Francisco has everything to do with how serious this is. I can't reiterate enough uh, how important it is for all of us to continue to comply, for all of us con to continue to be good citizens, to continue to cooperate. Um, this weekend, I received a note from one of my neighbors. Uh, the note basically had the email address and the phone number of one of my neighbors on the block uh, who said they were the block captain. So if I needed anything, whether it's grocery shopping or pharmacy pickups or what have you, or even someone to talk to, uh, they were available. And I got really emotional when I received that note because it just made me think about how amazing people are in this city and how I've heard of so many stories about people reaching out to their neighbors, people identifying uh, elderly people that they know need help and just dropping off groceries, folks just really stepping up and being there for one another. Because we know that it's not just about the physical health and what we need to do to combat the coronavirus. We also understand that as human beings, there's an emotional toll that this will take on so many of us. So it's so important that we continue to uplift one another and be there for one another as much as we possibly can. Uh, my thoughts and prayers definitely go out to the team at Laguna Honda. For 14 years, that team took care of my grandmother who had dementia. And I want to thank them for all they continue to do to give dignity to so many elderly patients who may not have family visits, who may not have support and resources to do anything other than um, to just be there. And those nurses and those doctors and those social workers continue to put a smile on the face of those patients. They show up every day. Uh, and, and they just really deserve our respect, our support, and we will do everything we can uh, to continue to do just that. Uh, so at this time, I would like to um, uh, introduce uh, Dr. Grant uh, Colfax, who's going to provide us with a lot more detail about specifically what's happening at Laguna Honda, uh, what we are doing uh, to prepare for the inevitable, and how together uh, we will do everything we can to save and change lives and get through this. So thank you all so much. And let me wipe this mic down. <laughs>
Good afternoon. I am Dr. Grant Colfax, Director of Health. Thank you, Mayor Breed. Today, I am saddened to report to the San Francisco community that Laguna Honda Hospital has a growing outbreak of coronavirus. We've prepared for this since the very start of our city's response to the pandemic. And we will continue to do everything we can to protect Laguna Honda's residents and staff. I want the Laguna Honda community and all of the families to know how much I care, we care about them, and they are our top priority. We are intensely focused on doing everything we can to protect everyone at Laguna Honda from harm. But I also need to be realistic and forthright. As we look at the data and the patterns around the world and in our country, we know that long-term care facilities are at most risk for coronavirus outbreaks. Therefore, we expect the situation to unfortunately get worse. Across the United States, many long-term care facilities have been hit hard by the coronavirus, including in California, Washington, Colorado, Minnesota, New York, and many other states. No local community is equipped to manage this escalating crisis alone. That is why we have asked for help from the state and federal government. And I am thankful that some of our requests are starting to be answered. As of today, infection control nurses from Cali the California Department of Public Health and infectious disease physicians and epidemiologists from the Federal Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, are on Laguna Honda's campus. Along with state and federal teams assisting from off-site, these experts are assessing the situation and will make recommendations for ongoing management of an outbreak that is expected to escalate. They will also work with leaders at the Department of Public Health to develop a prospective outbreak prevention and response plan for long-term care facilities in addition to Laguna Honda in San Francisco. I am grateful for this help, and we need more. From the beginning of the global outbreak, efforts by the city of San Francisco to prepare for the coronavirus have prioritized the most vulnerable populations. Residents who are over 60 years old and those with certain underlying health conditions and chronic diseases. The residents of Laguna Honda Hospital are in the most vulnerable of these groups. Laguna Honda currently has a total of 11 confirmed cases of coronavirus. Nine are among staff and two are among residents. All are in good condition. Since March 26, 158 staff and 54 residents were tested for the virus. Among residents, two have tested positive 51 negative, and one result is still pending. Among staff, 156 have tested negative, and 25 more tests are underway. I expect more cases of coronavirus in the Laguna Honda community among both staff and residents, because it is now spreading throughout the Bay Area. We are drawing on all the resources we can muster at the local, state, and federal level to strengthen our response. Laguna Honda has been and remains a top priority in the city's preparation and response to coronavirus. The first health officer order, after declaring a local health emergency in early March, was to restrict visitors from Laguna Honda in order to protect the institution's residents. Laguna Honda leadership has worked actively and diligently to train staff on coronavirus procedures, including the use of protective, personal protective equipment, PPE, thorough cleaning of common spaces and resident rooms, and other prevention techniques. Here is what is happening on campus right now to respond to the outbreak. First, the hospital incident command system is activated to manage the crisis. 
and the incident commander, Troy Williams, is here to answer further details about that process. The state infection control nurses are creating expanded protocols in env on environmental cleaning, PPE, and staff safety. The CDC is intensifying the contact investigation to look for sources of infection and the pathway of spread. This will inform our current actions and further development of an outbreak prevention and response plan that takes the coronavirus situation fully into account. The two units where the cases have been diagnosed, South 4 and South 5, are under an extensive quarantine order. Each of these units houses approximately 60 residents. Within these units, doors have been secured. Sheriffs are at the doors preventing residents from leaving and only allowing appropriate staff to enter. Residents are being assessed for symptoms on every shift and staff are being screened twice for symptoms at every shift. Testing of all staff on South 4 and South 5 where staff cases have been found is almost complete. To date, nine positive cases have been confirmed. Testing of all patients on South 5 where patient cases have been found is complete and results are pending. To date, two positive cases have been confirmed. All non-essential personnel are restricted from entering the facility. All essential visitors, staff, and residents are medically screened. All Laguna Honda staff are screened at the start of each shift. In addition, Laguna Honda is setting up a field care clinic on its grounds as a precaution, as a precaution in case there is a need to separate groups of patients. We are continuing to assess the situation and adapt our response accordingly, working with our state and federal partners. However, even best efforts are no guarantee against the spread of the virus. There are currently 374 cases and six deaths due to coronavirus in San Francisco. 